Brandy Brown says that authenticity is a collection of choices that we have to make every day. The choice to show up and be real, and the choice to be honest. This is Walking Your Talk, a personal development podcast about leadership, authenticity and courage. I'm Carolyn Taylor, and I've spent my life working with leaders in organizations on how to change their culture, but this is much more personal. If you want to be known as someone who walks your talk at work and beyond, then this podcast is for you. How many teams are you a member of? I imagine quite a few. I think the team is the foundation stone of an organization and trust is the foundation of that team. I do heaps of work with teams. I'm working with one right now where the trust between them is so high that they just make each other better every day. In any situation, you know, one of them might be out on the high wire doing some really scary stuff, but they always know that every other team member is standing underneath with their arms outstretched, ready to catch them if they fall. And that level of trust, of security, just makes them fly. I've also worked with some other teams, as you can imagine, where the trust is so unbelievably low. It's amazing they get anything done at all. And their lack of trust and collaboration and coordination is actually downright sabotaging of each other sometimes the impact on the customers that they jointly serve or their ability to execute on anything that requires them to be anything more than just one of them involved is really impaired. I'm sure you've all been a part of one of those teams at some point in your career. I know I have. So what I'd like to explore with you today is what can you do to improve trust if you're either in a team or leading a team? whether trust is low or too low for your liking. I think it's easy to say, well, it should be the team leader to do that, but I actually don't think that is necessarily the case. I've seen many teams where the impetus to build trust has not come from the team leader. It's just come from one or two or three of the team members just going, enough, we're going to do something about this. I think the single most impactful thing I've found that works is to create vulnerability. Because when people do show more vulnerability to each other, I think their trust of each other improves because they see each other as humans with all the foibles that we all share. And when someone comes across as too perfect, too intact, if you like, we tend to assume that they're hiding stuff. And in some way that stuff will damage us. So trust drops. The more open people are, the more other people trust them. So one of the best exercises that I love to run when I'm working with teams is one that we call, if you really knew me, I do it, I'd say at least once a month. Let me describe how it works. We usually do it over dinner. So everyone's had a couple of drinks and we get a table in a private room so that the table is set up so everybody can see each other and you can have one conversation. So it's usually like a square table or something like that. And then the exercise is simply that Anybody pops up and says, if you really knew me, and then they tell a story about something that happened to them or something that has shaped who they are today, either something that happened that was somewhat traumatic or a person who had a strong influence or some strong set of values that they hold that has shaped who they've become. And the stories just get more and more profound as the evening goes on. It's absolutely extraordinary. And they're almost always not work stories, but they're just stories that everyone goes, oh, now I understand more about why you are the way that you are. It makes sense to me now. And so my empathy for you goes up. Honestly, some of the stories I have heard have just been so moving. Can't really share them here, but you can imagine. So how then do you improve vulnerability? There is a school, of course, of setting up an environment where an exercise like that will work. But in your own team, some people say that you can't be vulnerable unless there's trust. So it becomes a bit of a catch-22. 
But my belief is that in fact the opposite is true. That being vulnerable where there is some mistrust and taking a step towards that risk actually improves the trust. Now you've got to judge how much, how deep, how vulnerable, but it really, really does make a difference. If you want to go more deeply into vulnerability, as Brené Brown says, you're the one who has to step forward and make those choices. So I'll give you some practical steps that I've found are really great. And I've learnt a lot of these, by the way, from using Patrick Lencioni's team survey. don't know if any of you have seen it, but for me, it is the best on the market. And it, trust is one of the dimensions it measures. And it has some really good questions that relate to building trust. And they almost all are about vulnerability and being prepared to take risks with people. So a few years ago, I was deeply hurt by somebody who I loved very much to the extent that I pretty much fell apart. And I really struggled to keep things going at work. And that went on for some months. And the members of our core leadership team at that time were just fantastic. They stepped in, they held the business together. Actually, it thrived. I was out and it thrived. And later, as things started to kind of stabilize for me, one of them said it was obviously a terrible time, but for us, it was actually the best of times. Oh, thanks, I say. But the reason was because we saw you as a human almost for the first time, because they told me that I'd always seemed so remote like I had it all together, never showed my flaws. And that actually, they said, kept me away from them. She actually said that. It keeps you away from us. And now we know, they said, that you struggle in the same way as we do. And we feel safer to be open with you and to admit our mistakes and to kind of work like we were all in this together. On a broader level for me, actually, in terms of my whole life, that whole experience just broke me open in a way that has made me more vulnerable and more willing to share that vulnerability with others because I just realized at that time how amazing, what an amazingly positive impact it had on everybody around me and especially on, on our team at work. Now, I'm not suggesting that you have to go through something like that, but there are little ways that you can do it. So here are some small ways that can, can become your exercise for this week. Try some of the following. Talk about a mistake that you've made. And not talk about it in terms of, I made this mistake, but then I corrected it, and now you know I'm the champion of the world. But talk about a mistake you made which kind of didn't work out and has cost us something. Just even the little stuff, you know. I don't think I got that presentation quite right. I made some mistakes and I don't think we got across the message we wanted. And as a result, you know, we didn't win the business or we didn't win the support we were looking for from these other people in our business. So talk about a mistake. Ask for help. Offer help. Actually, offering help is easier than asking for help. Asking for help is probably step two here. Ask for help. I don't know how to do this. Can you help me out? I'm overloaded. I don't quite know how I can cope. Can you let me off the hook on something or can we do something differently? Apologize for something that you said or did. I pushed us to doing this and I was wrong. I'm sorry. Oh, I let you down by not getting that thing done in time. I'm sorry. Point out a behavior of your own which doesn't quite live up to standards. I was with a leader last week who was with his team, and he stood up and he said, I'm pretty certain you think I'm not making enough decisions, and I'm taking too long, and I'm avoiding stuff. I've started to get that feedback from some of the 360s that you've been giving me, and I'm sorry, and I want to work on it, so please help me and let me know when I do it next. Wow. Okay, you could have heard a pin drop in that room. That's going to make a difference to that team. So admit, apologize for something that you did. Be courageous at admitting out your own behaviors. And if you do that, then I think you're in a position to start pointing out some behaviors in someone else. You know, when you did this, I found it difficult. It didn't quite meet what we'd agreed. 
Another thing is to share something that did shape you. As I said before, in that, that exercise that we did, just talk more about you as a person, be more personal, open up about what's going on outside of work. So there's six or seven things there. And each one of them just makes this small contribution to lowering the barriers which build up and create that mistrust in teams, which in turn makes it so hard for you to then fly and achieve together. Of course, by doing these things, you are looking for some reciprocity for others to mirror your behavior. Some may and some may not. Obviously, you don't want to be overly vulnerable in a world where no one else is doing it. But at the same time, if you wait for other people to initiate things, nothing will ever happen. So it's all about appropriateness and balance and how far can you go. But my invitation is be the one who starts it. Make that happen. You can also consider doing you know, some specially designed team development activities with an outside facilitator. I think those do help. They, they give you a kind of a kick start. What's great about all this is that however people actually respond, when you learn some of those skills of vulnerability, you actually find that you start to change in some quite unexpected ways in your relationships with other people, both inside and outside of the team. So trust me, it works. Go well with this, because in the next episode, I want to cover trust between teams and that becomes a whole nother level of challenge and opportunity. So I look forward to talking more with you next week. And I hope you're able to put in some of the exercises from this week as practice for taking it further next time. Thank you and see you then. <laughs>